Ever wonder what the f is inside a cowboy boot? Howdy, I'm Will, founder of Chisos Boots, and today I'm gonna take this saw, cut open these boots, and show you who's doing it right and who's cutting corners. Let's get it. When I set out to learn the boot making process, one of the first things that I did is I took my boots and I cut them in half and I saw what was inside. And I started to see that, you know, some guys were starting to cut corners and other ones were still using the old school methods, but they weren't necessarily comfortable. Um, but it was, a, it was a big part of my understanding of how a good boot is assembled. And so today we're gonna do that on camera. We're gonna cut open three boots from different makers and find out exactly what each one is made of. Now, what we have here is a boot that's gonna run you about $200, $230. Uh, you know, this is an entry level handmade boot. And after we cut it open, you know, for the money, it's it's not a bad option. You know, one of the things I like about it is it has a hung lining. Um, it is just a bovine or lower quality lining, but it does go all the way into the footbed area, or excuse me, into the into the foot cavity. Um, you know, that's a nice touch. It's gonna it's gonna make it a little softer than what maybe you're used to. They've hidden the seams on the inside, um, but that's probably where most of my compliments are going to end. They're not using a full leather heel counter. Now, the heel counter is the structural integrity focal point of a cowboy boot. This is why they last for 40, 50 years, is that leather will give and take and it will reshape with your foot over time and allow you to resole the boot, you know, almost infinitely. Um, however, they're using uh, just a layer of Celastic here. I think it might be a double layer for that hardening. So what that's going to do is it will conform to your heel the first time you get it, um, but then it's not going to reconform over time. It's gonna become brittle. And the problem with that is that as you use your boot, that uh, lack of elasticity will then actually crack. And once it cracks, the boot's shot. You can't use it anymore. You'll probably get about four to five years of use out of this boot, which again, for the price isn't bad, uh, but it's not gonna be you know, one of your boots that'll have some sort of heritage durability, 40, 50 years. You won't be giving this to your grandkids uh, in your will. So I, I might recommend this boot for city use, but I wouldn't if you're actually gonna ride your boots hard and maybe use them uh, every day or, or, or do some work in them. Now, as we move down the boot, we do have a full stacked leather heel. Uh, then that is capped with a rubber end cap. Again, this is very standard these days and it's a good touch. It gives you uh, durability and support, but you're also getting some traction there on the heel. Now, when we cut through it, uh, you can see here that you know, they're using compressed uh, uh, cardboard, I believe, here for some of the main body. They do have cork in the footbed, which I like to see. Uh, there's a single layer of foam, which is essentially all that you're gonna get in terms of cushioning. And that's covered 
uh, just simply by about a millimeters worth of, of leather. Again, so you know, it's a standard cowboy boot. You know, you're getting a little bit of support, uh, but there's there's real no cushioning of any kind here. Now, one thing I want to take a closer look at is the shank. And when we cut through this boot, I was a little surprised at, at how easy it was uh, to cut through this. Um, and you know, now that we've got it open, you can you can see why. Uh, it starts out as, as steel, you know, um, this is of course half of the shank, uh, but it, you know, it's, it's a little thin to begin with. Um, and then it's dipped in some sort of uh, a resin, you know, a synthetic here. Uh, so, you know, you're, you're not getting, you know, the full uh, strength that you might get from something like an 18 gauge full steel. Um, so again, great for a city boot. Uh, I don't know that I would use this or recommend it if you're gonna wear your boots hard uh, as the durability is gonna be a little lacking here. Uh, a couple of things to point out is that, you know, I can tell that they're using uh, a canvas ribbing here to connect the welt to the rest of the boot. Again, standard and big factory made boots, uh, but it's another point of failure if you're gonna be using these hard. Um, so overall, you know, verdict on this one is that it's, it's a decent boot. You're getting your money's worth at 230 bucks, uh, but you know, it just isn't gonna have the durability you might expect from a higher end product. All right, so what we have here is a boot that's from a legacy brand. And when we ran it through the saw, you know, it put up a bit of a fight, which I was impressed with. Now the upper here is glued in. You've got your stitching that goes all the way through. You've got your exposed uh, seams and stitching on the inside, which typically don't like to see. Um, that leather doesn't follow down. They're using a, a, a cheaper lining leather here uh, for the foot area. Now there is cork in it, again, very classic. And you've got a about a few millimeters of foam on the inside, uh, but that's all you're getting in terms of comfort. The leather on it is extremely thin. Um, now it doesn't necessarily mean uh, it's not going to be pliable, but it is going to cut down on some of the longevity and durability of it. Now, one of the things I do like about this boot very much is the heel counter is full leather. Cutting through that, I was not able to get through it uh, with the knife on my own, had to use the saw. Uh, so that's, that's absolutely a good sign of a boot. Uh, stock leather heel. One thing that's interesting is the angle of the heel on this particular pair uh, is, is uh, much sharper than on the other two. Um, and then we get to the shank. Now something funny happened here. So it is a steel shank uh, now completely dipped in plastic. Uh, and when cutting into it, we got about maybe two thirds of the way through and then it actually broke loose and was drug through the boot uh, until we realized what was happening and we and stopped and, and pulled it out. So an interesting thing to have happen, um, you know, strong shank. Uh, however, uh, the you know, connective connectivity to the rest of the boot perhaps a little lacking. Uh, now the you know stitching on the sole actually is seated really well. Like to see that. Um, you know, stitching internally, almost double stitching everywhere. Again, good for durability. One thing I don't like is that they're using the canvas for the welt. Uh, that's again going to let in moisture and be a point of failure, but standard and factory made boots. 
Now you will notice that there's nothing else here in terms of uh, cushion. I mean, you're, you're standing on essentially hard leather on concrete or on rocks, depending on where you're wearing them. Uh, so, you know, that's gonna then, you know, be, be hard on the, on the joints and, and the lower back. I'm excited to talk to you about the Chisos number no. two. So this is part of our inaugural line of boots. We've got Chisos one through four, and this is what I call the ranch boot. So we've designed it to be absolutely comfortable, but also durable, just like boots of old, uh, to combine to be the perfect everyday work boot, uh, as well as a boot that's you know classy enough to wear out to dinner that night. So let's take a look at what it's made of. The first thing you'll notice is the insole. So I have been wearing boots uh, my whole life, and one of the things that I continue to have problems with is how uncomfortable they were, either for my feet or my back. And so that's what I tackled first, is you know, we've learned a lot from the athletic industry over the past 40 to 50 years, and so I poured that knowledge into this. You have 11 millimeters of comfort and cushion. The bottom layer on the heel and the ball of the foot is impact dissipating gel. This takes the strikes when you walk and dissipates that so the energy doesn't travel up into your knees or your back, but instead is absorbed by the material or actually absorbed by the rest of the boot itself. Above that, we have the next layer of primary support, and then that's covered by a foam. Now, some other boots use memory foam, but in my experience, when you wear them for hours on end, that memory foam loses its rebound and actually collapses. And so we use something a little bit different. It's got a little bit more rebound to it, uh, the support uh, to support your feet. One of the things that happens when you've got uh, your feet trying to balance is they're making minute adjustments every second trying to balance you. So if you have a footbed that actually adjusts to the shape of the feet, it reduces the need for them to try and rebalance, which then of course reduces fatigue. And when you're on your feet all day, that matters. That is then covered by uh, premium leather, just like you would expect from a traditional boot. It's gonna have natural antimicrobial properties, as well as look and feel the way you want your boot to feel. The next thing I wanna highlight is our leathers. So we use a premium leather lining on the inside. As far as I know, we're the only ones to do that. It's a hung lining, it's extremely soft and comfortable. All the seams here on the shaft are gonna be hidden. Um, and then our exterior leather, which we treat to be soft and, and supple and broken in the day you get it, but it's still thicker than any leather we've looked at today, which is gonna add to that durability which brings me to the full leather heel counter. Now, when I started to cut open boots and see what was out there, I saw that not everyone is doing this, and it's very important. The idea of a cowboy boot is something that you can beat up and you can wear hard and it'll last you for decades. And that generally comes down to how is the heel counter constructed and how are some of the other seams constructed? The heel counter is the structural focal point of the boot. A full leather heel counter like we have here allows the boot to adjust to your feet over time, adjust to your ankle so you get a custom fit, but then allows you to resole and replace the heels 
This should last you 40 to 50 years of hard use. As we go down, you can see that we've actually used cork, uh, traditional cork bed lining, arguably unnecessary because of the insole, but didn't want to cut any corners. We then have an extra thick interior vegetable tan leather uh, traditional insole. Now this is something you'll see on boots made 40, 50 years ago. Um, not so much today, people are cheapening them, but we wanted to go back to the old ways. This means that if you pulled our insole out, you could actually wear this boot. Uh, it's got everything that a normal boot would have in it. A couple of things I want to point out on the durability aspect traditional channel welt. Now we're not using a canvas rib that comes pre-assembled off-site from some other location. We have a small workshop and there's just a few guys who still know how to do that hand channel weld into the leather insole. They peel it back, they sew leather to leather. Uh, it's extremely durable. It also cuts down on the moisture that gets into your boot, overall adding to a better experience and a more durable boot. Now, one thing I wanna point out here is that the shank on this boot almost threw my shoulder out trying to cut through it. Um, you know, it's 18 gauge steel, and you can see here, this is just half of it, and it's ex extremely strong. Um, this is going to be the strongest shank of any of the boots that we looked at today. Um, but that, again, means that you can beat the hell out of this boot, and it can take anything you can throw at it. So overall, you know, when I was putting this together, I was essentially solving my own desires, which is that I wanted a very comfortable boot that I could wear all day with, you know, in the city to meetings, but then I could turn around and I could take it out to the ranch and I could beat the hell out of it. I could walk across rocks, you know, I could do work in it and it could take that as well. The thing that sets Chisos apart is we've gone back in time and looked at the most durable ways of boot making, and we've married that with the past 40 or 50 years of knowledge gained in terms of how to build comfort into footwear. And the combination of these makes the best damn boot that's on the market today. Thanks for watching. You can find us at chisos.com on all the social medias, and we still answer our phone. Y'all take care. We hope to hear from you soon. I'll tell you this. Well, Casey and Jesus are in a class all their own. Yeah. This is nothing compared to what Tacoma's was like. <laughs>